This is a really quick video about Newton's third law, which we often refer to as the law of action-reaction. The law states that if body one exerts a force on body two, body two will exert a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction on body one. That's why we call it action-reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in this case, if we had body one, and body two, when we talk about the force that one exerts on two, I might label it something like this, the force of one on two. And what we're saying then is, in reaction to that, Newton found that body two will exert a force that's equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So I might write like this. So it's not that it wasn't a good negative sign. The force of one on two is equal and opposite to the force of two on one. Because I'm writing them as vectors, I put in the negative sign to indicate that the direction of the two vectors are, is opposite. In action-reaction, how these forces are exerted on each other can vary depending on the scenario. Often, it's going to be through direct contact. For instance, if I push on a wall, the wall will push back on me. We are touching each other, and so that's why we call it a contact force. However, when we think about gravity and some other forces, they are forces that act at a distance, and so the two objects don't necessarily have to be touching in order to be exerting forces on each other. For example, we know that the sun exerts a force of gravity on the Earth. You might have not thought about the fact, but through Newton's laws of action-reaction, the Earth is also exerting a force on the sun. Those two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So I want to just look at a simple situation and just talk about the forces that might exist in this scenario and also what their action-reaction pair will be. So my simple situation is a ball that is on a table. Now, some of the forces that I can think of that might act on this ball is this we might associate with the force of gravity, which pulls down on it. But I'm going to say that this is the force um, that the Earth exerts on the ball. Sorry, that's not great. but So that's one force. Another force that I might have right here is the force that the table exerts on the ball. We often refer to that as the normal force, but for our purposes, because of the fact that I want to emphasize action-reaction pairs, um, I'm just calling it the force that the table exerts on the ball for now. Now, both of these forces that I've identified have an action-reaction pair. So let's think about what they are. The first, pick, uh, first force that I drew was the force that the Earth exerts on the ball. Well, in reaction to that, um, here's my ground, there's a force that the ball is exerting on the Earth. Now, I tried to draw them both with the same color. This, I did do a great job of making them equal in magnitude, but they are equal in magnitude, so the force of the ball on the earth is equal and opposite to the force that the earth exerts on the ball. So according to the third law, those two forces are equal and opposite. Now the action-reaction pair to the force that the table exerts on the ball would be, I'm going to just draw it next to it, this one will be easier for me to draw right is the force that the ball exerts on the table. Again, the force that the ball exerts on the table is equal and opposite to the force that the table exerts on the ball. 
Now sometimes this question comes up, and it's a good question because e it gets people confused, is if we have all these action-reaction pairs and they're equal and opposite, which means they're always going to cancel each other out, like don't we just all have never have a net force? But the key is that when we look at this expression, the forces acting on an object, which is either equal to the mass times acceleration or it's equal to zero, the thing that we need to take into account is that these are forces in both cases that are acting on a single object. So for instance, I might look at the scenario of what's happening to the ball. And the two forces that I would have to consider for the forces acting on the ball would be the force of the table on the ball, which is positive, so I'm writing that as a positive, and then the force that the earth exerts on the ball. And I drew that negative because that one was pointing down. Notice that these are not an action-reaction pair. They're not. They actually do turn out to be equal and opposite because our ball's not moving. So our ball is in equilibrium. So these two forces do cancel out. But just because they cancel out doesn't mean that they're an action-reaction pair. They don't act like an action-reaction pair. To me, an action-reaction pair is very sing-songy, like the ball pushes on the table, the table pushes on the ball. You know, it always goes like that. That's not what's going on here. We have one force that the table is exerting on the ball and another force that the earth is exerting on the ball. Notice that in, when I'm looking at the forces, I'm only concerned with the forces that are acting on the ball. The action-reaction pairs to both of these forces does not come into play. It doesn't mean they don't exist, but it actually means we don't care right now. So I hope that that helps sort of get you familiar with the law of action-reaction. But I also want you to think about the fact of how this behaves and how we look at forces on an object to understand that when we focus on one single object, we will not look at an action-reaction pair because those two forces act on two different objects. All right, enjoy this chapter.